All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day, and uh, thank you for loving us, Lord. I pray that uh, uh, we would use our life to serve you, and also the children as they grow up, that they would use their lives to serve you. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Who remembers last week? Does anyone remember last week? Here's a hint. Hmm. About our life, yeah. So what's, what's what about our life to be learned about last week? You remember? Things to be grateful for. Things to be grateful for? Or how God loves us. Remember the ways that God loves us? We looked at Song of Solomon. Let's read it together. You ready? Song of... <coughs> excuse me. Let's, let's try that again. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. So what is one of the ways God loves you? He gave you life. You're alive. He sustains you. Holds you together. Aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you grateful to be alive? I know I am. That's one way we remember how God loves us is that we're alive. Oh, today, here's the title of the message today. The answer is you. You, you are the answer. The answer to what? Well, let's have a look. Sit quietly, remember? Okay, hey, hey, sit quietly. All right, Isaiah 6.8, I'm going to read it for you first. Look at this. You guys laughing? Yeah, now you know, this is where his name comes from. This is where your mate's name comes from. Look at this, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Look at this. Then said I, who? Isaiah. Then said I, here am I, send me. So what's going on here? Do you know God was looking for somebody to help him with a mission? Help him to do a job. And he asked everyone, he said, Hey, who am I going to send? Who will go for us? Who is God going to send to do this very important task? And you know who the answer was here? Isaiah didn't say, is somebody else send somebody else. What did he say? He said, then said I, here am I, send me. You see, he put his hand up. He volunteered for that task for, for God, didn't he? He didn't expect somebody else to do it. He took up that challenge. So the answer was him in this instance, but it's you, isn't it? Because sometimes God wants you to do something and who's going to do it? What's the answer? You. That's right. The answer is you. Let's read this together. You ready? Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. So he wasn't looking around for somebody else to do the job. He says, no, I've got to do it. Here am I, send me. The answer is you. Let's look at some examples here. You, yes, you. Not somebody else. I want you to think, who's the answer? It's me, isn't it? Me? But I'm saying it from my point of view, is you. That's a bit confusing, isn't it? The answer is you, 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 and you. All right, let's look at some examples of when we can take responsibility for something. Okay, the answer is you. What's this? Let's say you're walking somewhere, maybe around your home, and you see a toy on the ground. It's not put away. What sometimes do kids do? Maybe they just kick it to the side. Maybe you look at it and you think, you know, somebody should really clean that up. Somebody should really pick that up, shouldn't they? Sometimes kids just uh, ignore it. They see it there, and then it's not my problem. I just walk over it. But what should be the right attitude when you ask who's going to pick it up? 
What's the answer? Yeah, the answer is yeah, you can pick it up. You can fix the problem, can't you? You don't have to wait for somebody else to fix the problem. You can fix it. You see a problem? Sometimes you see rubbish here on the floor at church. You don't think, oh, who's going to clean that up? The answer is you. You can clean it up. See, you find a need and you feel it, don't you? Let's think of another example where we can do something about it. We don't have to wonder who else. Oh, see a hot drink. Somebody's put it on the, somebody's maybe done the wrong thing, put it on the very edge of the table. That's dangerous, isn't it? That's what if somebody accidentally knocks it. You know, sometimes we tell, hey, push your cup further into the table. Well, let's say you're walking along and you see, oh, this is a bit dangerous. Should I just ignore it? Should I just walk past and go, hmm? Should I put it closer to the edge? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> when I do that, who's going to fix this problem when we see it? What's the answer? You. You, you can fix it. Oh, I can fix it. Yeah, my, that's a bit confusing, isn't it? Maybe I should have put the answer as me. I can fix it. Right? So we take some responsibility. We don't have to wait for somebody else to fix the problem. You know, we can take response. We can put our hand up, like Isaiah put his hand up. Here am I. Send me. Oh, what's another situation we might find ourselves in where we can do something about it? What do you think this is? Yeah, he's lonely and he's got nobody to play with. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when we're out with our friends, we're so focused on playing with our own friends, we don't notice that there's somebody in the group that doesn't have any friends to play with. You know, do we just leave them alone? Do we not say hello? Do we not be friendly with them? No, we want to make sure they're included in the group as well, don't we? So we see something like this. That's a problem, isn't it? We don't want somebody, especially they come to church and they don't get to play with everyone else because we're so busy playing with the people that we know. So what can we do about it? Who's, what's the answer to this problem? What's the answer? Yeah, yeah, you can do something about it. You say, you look at them, oh, it sure would be nice if somebody went and, went and spoke to them. It sure would be nice if somebody made a friend with them. Oh, and I'll just go play with my friends. No, oh, who's going to fix the problem? It could be you. You can put your hand up and say, you know what? I'm going to say hello to them. I'm going to be friendly and make them feel a part of the group. You know, yeah, make, it big, make a big difference in their life. All right, what else? See, I'm leading up to this. So, sometimes we have small things in our life, like cleaning up, you know, things that are dangerous, you know, making sure people feel welcome. But what was Isaiah sent to do? What did God need? God needed people to, t to preach the gospel, didn't he? People to tell people about Jesus. And sometimes people have the frame of mind, well, that's somebody else's job. Somebody else will get it done. But what's the answer? Who do we need to go and preach the gospel? Who? You. You, you. The answer is you. We need everyone to preach the gospel. So we don't want to wait for somebody else to do it. We need to be like Isaiah. He says, here am I. Send me. All right, so we'll look at this again. Let's read it together. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. So the answer is you, isn't it? So if God needs you to do something, what should our attitude be? Here am I, send me. I'm the answer. I can feel that need. If I see a mess on the floor, who can fix it? You, you can fix it. Right? If you see something dangerous, who can fix it? You can fix it, right? And if we see, remember this example? Hey, sometimes when new kids come to church, hey, you want to make sure that they feel welcome. Wouldn't you like it? You know, wouldn't you like it if you came along and somebody was friendly to you? Hey, you can fix that problem. You can be friendly to them. And hey, maybe they need to hear about Jesus. Who can tell them? You. <laughs> That's right, okay? All right. Okay, so we got a craft today that uh, Christine has organized for us. So let's take, let's stand up, and we'll go to the back. I want you guys paying attention. Hey. Okay.